Hello, it's Nathan from Serious Geeks, and today's Tap to Go is going to be a discussion from the Warhammer Community article, Tanks Are Back on Track. Although the article itself focuses on vehicles, in particular tanks and monsters, there is another little change that I will go into in a minute that is incredibly useful for the entire 40k, and I think is going to make a massive shake-up of how we play the game. Starting with what affects vehicles and tanks in particular from the article, we have a new rule, big guns never tire. A vehicle or monster model can make attacks with ranged weapons even when its unit is with engagement range of enemy units. But the kicker is, it can only make such attacks against enemy units that it is with an engagement range of. So, basically, what this rule details is that if a unit is in close combat with a vehicle, that vehicle or monster can shoot said unit in close combat. That's essentially it. However, the rule does further clarify what else you can do in this circumstance. In particular, you can fire at additional models outside your engagement zone, providing you kill all the models in your engagement zone first. So, if you have, say, a twin-linked heavy bolter and twin-linked las cannons on your land raider, you can declare the land raider is going to shoot at a tank with its las cannons and the three orc models that are in close combat with it using the heavy bolters, hoping that you kill them first. To me, this seems like an essential rule that has been added to monsters and vehicles simply because the game is going to be a lot more close combat oriented now. With obscuring terrain being a thing and the smaller table sizes that have been detailed by Games Workshop for the missions, as well as things like outflank and fast moving units that can take advantage of these circumstances, I think you're going to need your vehicles to be able to do at least something when they're in close combat. Otherwise, they're going to just disappear from the table. The tactical application of this rule change for 9th edition Warhammer 40,000 is quite profound. Often underused units such as land raiders and battle wagons for orcs can actually find a decent use now on the tabletop. They won't be targeted as easily thanks to obscuring terrain, they have decent firepower themselves and they can unleash their cargo without the fear of being stuck in close combat. In fact, being charged by an orc battle wagon with their rollers on the front do a load of damage when they actually hit you and then able to shoot you in their own turn and then do additional damage as well is actually going to be quite a scary prospect land raiders as well they will actually have they have six attacks they're not great in close combat but on the other hand they're charging in they're tough they're almost impossible to kill by most conventional means in close combat toughness eight in two plus save not easy for an opposing unit to kill even with power fists in my view, Big Guns Never Tire is going to be incredibly useful for the Land Raiders in particular. They have a lot of firepower and with Toughness 8 and a 2 plus save, obscuring terrain hiding their approach, they can deliver a really powerful unit up close into close combat or at least close quarters firefighting whilst being able to support them with their said firepower. All the while having the option to charge into close combat themselves, soak up overwatch and just generally cause a lot of problems for the opponent. I think Land Raider is going to come back in a big way depending on their points cost and I can't wait to see it. Before I move on, I would like to point out that blast weapons are not affected by big guns never tire, which kind of makes sense. You don't really expect artillery weapons to be levelled at the unit that's assaulting the vehicle. People online have actually complained about big guns never tire being a complete elimination of the ability to tag a unit and stop it from firing. What's the point of assault when you can just shoot the unit in close combat? Well, I think if you look a bit closer at the rule, it forces decisions on your opponent if you do charge their tank or vehicle or monster. I mean, there's no guarantee with whatever weapons they have, they're going to kill the unit. Therefore, they won't be able to shoot at anything else. There's also no guarantee that the vehicle or monster you're attacking has weapons suitable for the, the unit that charged them. An impulsor might actually charge into, say, a Lehman Ross battle tank. Now, its battle cannon is not a able to actually target it in close combat because it's a blast weapon so it's heavy bolters would have to do all the damage well instantly it hasn't got enough damage to be able to cause to a full strength impulsor to actually kill it and strength 5 against toughness 7 is not particularly guaranteed to do any damage anyway so in that example you can see that the Lehman Russ is actually completely tagged into close combat and can't get out of it unless it sacrifices its shooting so it's not as if the actual game has become simpler and defined by tanks dominating everything. It just means that you'll have to think a little bit harder with what you charge, 
or what you expect to receive a charge, which I think is very positive for the game. The very next change in the article was a change to the heavy rules. Now it will only affect infantry squads. So as you can probably imagine, the first thing that everyone thinks of here is vehicles and monsters. But also this is going to affect things like biker units, attack bikes in particular, which are going to receive a huge buff from this. One of the biggest bugbears in 8th edition was how heavy affected all units universally. Vehicles in particular became a unit that would just sit there firing rather than careening around the table, which is kind of what you expect from a battle tank anyway. So what does this change in particular mean for 40k? Well, I think it's going to really affect people's army lists. People are going to look at units again that they never considered, such as land speeders and attack bikes. Vehicles like Eldari Wave Serpents and Falcons can actually use their transport capacity as well as shooting and not be diminished for it. Therefore, it's going to open up avenues for other aspects of tactical play. Invariably, with lots of movement around the table, we're going to have units meeting each other in closer ranges than what they were before which again I think is a very positive change. It means that units are going to have to get up close because of the way that objectives are placed and because of obscuring terrain. There's going to be close combat action. There's going to be close combat firepower. Short ranged shooting is going to be a thing again. And I think that's just positive for the game. I mean, if your Tau or Astra Matarum army was sweeping all before it because you were just sat there not moving, not assaulting, not even using the psychic phase, and just shooting that's not fun um, I'm afraid you may have got some enjoyment out of it but the vast majority of people won't and the vast majority of people won't enjoy playing it as well and then you'll lose opponents rolling dice at models and then taking them off the table without any avenue of changing what can be done about it is not fun so I think these are really positive changes and this in particular is delicious for me I actually really enjoy it but then I'm an Ultramarines player, so I get at least two turns with my tactical squads, my Devastator squads, etc. Being able to move forward with their heavy weapons and take the benefit of not having a minus one to hit. But that's an Ultramarines thing. I won't go into that. Someone pointed out to me quite astutely that Gazgal Thraka is a monster. Which means he can shoot in close combat with his Assault 12 weapon. Which is actually kind of scary. And it means that he won't be very easily clogged up by say a horde of guardsmen or termagants or whatever likewise gilliman is also a monster which means that he can shoot six shots at strength six ap minus one and damage two into close combat which is very powerful because you've got to consider that he's already hitting you with his emperor's sword or his hand of dominion so these two changes combined if we consider how it affect armies we're going to see more monsters and more vehicles with multiple different weapons on them rather than specialised down one path. Often we'd see a hive tyrant with say four devourers which would just fly around the table shooting everything whereas now we may see it change to one set of devourers plus a set of siphon talons so it can carve through infantry vehicles and then do the same in close combat which I think is going to be a very positive change. Dreadnoughts, ironclads for example could have a hurricane bolter that they can shoot into close combat. Contempt of dreadnoughts no longer need to be hanging at the back with two weapons. They can get up close around the obscuring terrain with their fast movement. They have a movement of nine, I would like to point out. They can reach close combat, punch things to death with their power fist, and if they get charged by a large unit, they can shoot them with their Kiz assault cannon whilst also fighting in close combat. Likewise, this will also affect how we consider vehicles. Because they can move around the table, not suffering a minus one to hit, and we know they're going to get charged more often, they will consider pintle mounted weapons more often. You will consider less specialised approaches to have an anti-tank weapon as well as, say, several heavy bolters as anti-infantry to protect you from actually being charged and being tied up in close combat. The Lehman Russ, for example, wants to be firing its battle cannon at things, but it can't do so if tagged in close combat. However, if it has three heavy bolters, it can really get rid of remnant squads that might charge it. So in summary, this is another set of changes that I'm really looking forward to. So far, Ninth Edition, all the changes I've seen are going to be positive ones. I've not seen anything I'm not particularly impressed with. Morale in 8th Edition I was very upset with, as well as the minus one to hit for moving with heavy weapons on vehicles. And those things have said to have been addressed. We haven't seen morale yet, but we've seen the vehicles 
and the heavy weapons changed. So I'm very positive about this new edition and all the changes it will bring. Let me know below what you think about these changes, whether you think they're positive, whether your gun line is going to be affected by it and what you're going to do to change it. Always like to see the comments below. Please like and subscribe and I'll catch you all soon. Peace out.